Let me get ready for this date. All right, dress, check. Am I sexy? Am I sexy? Ooh, look back at it. Okay, I have the dress. Let me put the earrings on. I got one in. Let's put the other one in. So while I was getting ready for this date, I don't have very much time because I have to get ready. I decided to let me share with you guys one of the worst dates. I have ever been on in my life not one of the worst dates but the worst date i had ever been on in my life it was maybe about three four years ago sorry y'all i'm trying to get it together I met the guy out at like a bar or something. I met him. We had good conversation. Everything was going fine. He was an older guy, maybe maybe three or four years older than me. The vibe was great. We exchanged numbers. Cool. I'm fine. We go back our separate ways. And I'm like, okay, that was a really cool, you know, conversation. Maybe it can go somewhere over the phone. So I'm the type. I will draw things out a little bit sometimes. So I decided to have a phone conversation, maybe three, four months. And he was like, you know, when are you going to let me take you out on a date? When are we going to get this rolling? Like, I really like you and I want to show just how much I like you. So at this point, I'm like, you know, it's been three, four months, which I don't normally, it depends on the guy and the vibe that I get. So for him, I had to wait a little bit longer because I had a couple of questions, a couple of red flags, if you will. Don't ignore red flags. Please don't. And he says that he wants me to come pick him up in his city and then we'll just ride together. I'm not judgmental. If I have to come pick you up because your car is in the shop or whatever, I believe that's what he told me that his car was in the shop. That's fine. You know, I, like I said, I'm not ju judgmental at all. That's cool. We can just go ahead and and take my car or you can get a rental. I don't know. I was a little younger then, but I wasn't as particular as I am now. I'm a little bit more particular because of this stuff that I've already been through. He calls and says, okay, you ready? Are you on your way? Pushing me. I'm like, yes, I'm excited. He's like, I can't wait to see you. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I had on a cute outfit. Date night, what I have on, you know, usually is about how I do it. You know, just cute. I get to the city that he lives in and he said I had to meet him at the barbershop to begin with. Meet where? Again, okay, I'm with it. I'm fine. Still being optimistic. You know, not trying to be too judgmental or anything like that. We'll meet at the barbershop. Now, I hate going to the barbershop as a single woman. And the reason being is so many men that try to holler at you or say something or try to talk to you. Hey, you know, let me talk to you. Let me. And I don't be in the mood because I have a son. So I'm used to taking him to the barbershop. But for the most part, I'd rather his dad take him to the barbershop. Um, and if I do take him, it's to a location where it's not a lot of people that's just going to be hollering at me. Anyway, so I pull up to the barbershop and I call him. I'm outside. He's like, come in. Oh, my God. Clearly, he wants to show off a little bit. That's fine. I'm dressed, you know, to be a little bit of a trophy. Just a little bit. I'm dressed for that. So, I'm like, okay, I'll go in and I meet, like, a couple of people. It's okay. But I'm starting to get this feeling that this date is going to be very interesting. But I'm still being optimistic. Spirits lifted. And I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat. So, we get in the car, leave the barbershop. I talk to everybody. Cool. And then we had to go to his mom's house or aunt's i think it was mom's house we had to go to his mom's house the kicker he stayed across the street from his mother did not know that that's a point that he left out on the phone conversations okay then so we get to his mom his mom's house and he said he had to go pick something up and that's when he was like i stay right across the street it won't take long i don't feel like i need to be going to your mama's house on the first date I just don't. I mean, some people do it. You know, it's fine. It's just a lot. You know, it's a lot. In three months, if you think I'm the one and I need to be meeting your mom, kudos to you. But more than likely, you're probably not right. But it's all good. So, because I'm saying you're not right that I'm not the one. 
don't get it twisted. I am a, a full package, a triple threat, a whole, what do they call it? I'm just saying on the first date, it would be to, for us to kind of bond and get to know each other and unwind and talk and really get to know each other's interests, what we like, what we don't like. That's what I kind of think of a first date, not going to meet mom and auntie and cousin and maybe a nephew and then we can meet some coworkers and a couple people at the barbershop. Not my idea of a first date, but hey, you know, that was his, let's go. Let's see what this is gonna be about. I end up going, no, I end up staying in the car. I didn't want to go meet mom. I'm sure she's a very sweet lady. After we leave, he says, look, we'll just walk across the street. Cause I was like, I mean, I can park in your driveway. So I'll park in his driveway, y'all. I get in the house and <laughs> um, in the house, it seems to be kind of empty in the living room. So I'm like, okay, he must've just moved again, something else. He left out the story. Maybe he just moved in. But anyway, there was no furniture in the living room. But he had a nice bedroom set. And he had something else and something else. So it was it was legit. You know, it was a nice little spot. But you could tell he hadn't been there but for like a couple of days. So maybe that's why he was excited. I think he had something laid out on one of his dressers or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, this is a really nice bedroom set. Really nice. So what's going on? Cause it, I believe in asking questions. So what's going on with the living room furniture? We have, oh yeah, I gotta get that. You know, I gotta get another one. I'm upgrading and I'm gonna get another living room set and it's gonna be really nice. I said, oh, I bet it is. That sounds really promising. And usually I don't date um, potential, not anymore. So I was proud that he was going to get another living room set. I was okay with that. I was okay that another living room set was coming. But I think he went to the bathroom and there was a paper that was out. I don't snoop, not while dating, like maybe in a marriage or something. What's theirs is mine. But we were just dating. So the paper was out and it said rent a center. So apparently he was renting all of his things from rent a center. Again, I'm not judging people. I have two. I think my first living room set was from Renna Center in the picture or something like that. I was in my 20s and he was in his 30s or 40s. That was another flag like, oh my gosh. Okay, well maybe he, you know, hard times and all this stuff. So we finally make it out the house. He gets in my car and he was like, okay, now here is the grand finale. Okay, you guys, this was, this is the kicker. Okay. So we get in the car and he was like, so where do you want to go eat? Now I'm not a, I'm a rest, restaurant connoisseur. I love restaurants. I love going out to eat. I love cooking at home. But so I, so I usually do eat at finer restaurants, but every now and then, you know, I'll take my family to family restaurants or whatever. I just like good food, whether that be from a mom and pop's place or a chain restaurant or whatever. So anyway, he chooses Applebee's. Nothing wrong with Applebee's. So we pull up to Applebee's and um, we sit down and we're having good conversation, good talk. And you know, Applebee's, they bring out the regular menu. So they bring out the regular menus and I'm like, okay, I love steaks. I love, I love a lot of things, but everybody who knows, well, anyone who's really taking me on a date, they know that I love steak and potatoes. It's one of my favorite meals. So I was ready to order. And I was like, okay, fine. We had a rough beginning, a little rocky time. We're going to get past this. Let me get my eat on. I love to eat. This food makes things better sometimes. I'm looking at my menu. Ooh, let me see. And he was like, oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute. So I got something for you. I was thinking, and he slid me another menu. I said, oh, what's this? He said, you can pick anything you want. From the two for 20 menu. Do what now? Did he say he's about to limit what I can eat on the first date? Who does that? I said, oh, oh. In my mind, but I think it came out my mouth because in my mind, I was like, wonder if I don't see anything. I want on the two for 20. It was like, yeah. It's gotta be something. I mean, you know, 
I said, is there another option? Maybe? Like, are you just saying if I want to? Or it's like, yeah, because. So, you know what, y'all? I just feel like there's nothing wrong with Applebee's. There is nothing wrong with a two for 20. But when we have been talking on the phone for three months, for three months, and we finally get together, and you did all of this talking and hyping and excitement and just anticipating. What were you anticipating? What were you anticipating? Huh? You was anticipating for me to either choose the 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 five the two ounce ribeye or the chicken reheated chicken or something. Again. Applebee's, I am not knocking you guys. I'm not throwing, I'm not talking shit about you guys. But that was not my preference for a first date. And then to limit me, at least if we go into Applebee's, can I get my T-bone? You say, no, I got to get the two for 20. So at that point, and I think I had to get water. Did the drink come included? It, I think the drink did come included. At this point, at this time of the day, I'm just done. I've had enough. I feel like... Uh, our time has drawn to the end. Our time has come to the end and it's been real. But I bet you what I won't do is go on a date with your ass ever again. You can, let me tell you something. Do not take a lady who you've been trying to holler at for three, four, five, six, seven months to Applebee's or cookout because it's about equivalent to me at this point. Again, work with me. Y'all know what I mean. But I'm just saying, all of that work. And then all these red flags. You stay across the street from your mama. Then your car's in the shop. And then I gotta meet you at the barbershop. And I gotta do this. And I gotta do that. And then, no. Just know, there will be no second date. So I ended that. I ended that. Moral of the story. Date when you're ready. Date when your funds are up. Date on your level. Don't date potential. But see, I didn't date potential. I just ignored the red flag. Another, another mental note to self. Don't date potential. Don't ignore red flags. Do it. Don't you ignore those red flags. Hmm. Oh. I gotta go. Okay. Look at me. I'm running out of time. It's date night. I bet you this date won't go how that date went. I bet you that much. It's Godiva Empress. I will see you guys later. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment. What was your horror date? Do you remember the worst date you ever had? If so, drop it down below. Let's talk about it. Don't cheat yourself. Peace.